Tonight, all the news that's fit to share from Facebook's F8, Hulu's relaxing some restrictions, and new smartphones are on the horizon. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 77 for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to our top story, F8. A lot of news coming out of Facebook's annual developer conference. And joining us now to talk more about the details is Jill Duffy, writer over at PC Maggie. Jill. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine. I'm trying to get my head around all of the stuff that Facebook announced after some, I think, some some sort of quiet announcements as of late. They kind of went big again with a, with a big... Big F8 event. A lot of uh, journalists were there. I assume you were covering it uh, from the East Coast. I was sitting in on what I could. I let the news team at PC Mag kind of get the breaking stuff. And then I like to sort of process it and think about what was important. What do people really need to know going forward? Well, let's talk as much as we can about everything that was covered. Let's talk about Facebook Connect. It's probably, probably the biggest announcement that came out of the event today. What is the next generation of Facebook Connect? How does it differ? Okay, so Facebook Connect is that authentication button that you have that allows you to sign up for new apps using your Facebook account rather than creating a new username and password or giving your email address away. Now, to date, when you do that, it gives the app access to a little bit of information about yourself. So the announcement today was that Facebook is going to start adding an anonymous login for these apps so that you can try them out without giving up your information. I think this is really good. I mean, this is sort of fits with Zuckerberg saying that he takes privacy really seriously and that people need to have a lot of options. So I think this is a really, really good move that you can create a username, you know, create an authentication for a new app, try it out, but not give up this information about yourself. The one thing I don't know, and I would really like to talk some, to some Facebook app developers developers about this is whether it kind of indemnifies you to Facebook because let's say that in a couple of years you want to delete your Facebook account well does that mean that you're losing all of your account history with all of these other apps that you used um, the Facebook Connect authentication for. So that's one thing that I'm still sort of questioning. And users are going to see this option roll out to a couple of select apps at first, and then maybe in a few months we'll see it everywhere. I also wonder if, you know, Facebook is, is sometimes docked uh, by users for being confusing. Now, on the developer side, this is kind of nice because you can say, well, we'll give people more of an option to decide what they want to share with the app, whether it's nothing or or maybe friends but not birthday and that sort of thing. But on the user side, is it going to be confusing for people who are wanting to use Facebook Connect for apps? I think it, it from what I've seen of the design, it doesn't look very confusing. So the Facebook Connect button that authenticates and gives away some of your information is bright blue. That's the one everybody's seen. The new one is black. It really stands out and it has a little lock icon icon on it. Um, Flipboard is going to be one of the first apps to have it. So if you want to take a look at it, download Flipboard. About two hours ago, I checked. It still wasn't up there yet, but we should be seeing that soon. And then I think there's going to be a little hover over information or, you know, click for more information so that you can really see, okay, what does anonymous truly mean here? So I feel like it's actually pretty clear. And this is a really good move for Facebook because we know in the past they haven't been very clear. There's also a new mobile like button. Uh, developers can bake into their own app so that uh, URI could share uh, articles or, or information with each other from those apps. Kind of surprising to me that that is not something we've seen before since Facebook has had so much success uh, uh, rolling out ads on mobile, uh, be, being accessed on mobile more often. This is a good thing. Yeah, actually, it's funny that you say that Facebook has been successful with its mobile advertising. Because remember, two years ago, their dollar value for mobile ads was zero. Exactly. So in two years, they've gone from zero. I think now it makes up something around like... Uh, 60% of their total revenue. 
60% is coming from mobile ads. So that's huge. A lot of what was at F8 today was really about developers and how can developers make money. Now, when those app developers make money, Facebook, of course, is going to make a cut. So I think aside from Facebook Connect, a lot of the announcements today were really about that back end development. So how can mobile advertisers make money? How can mobile app makers make money in the mobile environment. And for us, there wasn't a whole lot to see. I mean, stuff like the like button or, um, you know, this uh, push to push to mobile experience. So if you're using an app, say on your computer and the app developer, um, RDO was the example that they use. So you're using the RDO app on your computer. You want to maybe later at another time, access it on your mobile phone through Facebook. You can send like a little push notification that will remind you within the Facebook app. Now, it's a little bit of an end user experience, but that's really more information for the developers. You know, speaking of developers, uh, the mobile ad network called Facebook Audience Network, or FAN, uh, the acronym, uh, was also announced so developers can make money without having to sell their own ads. That sounds like a great thing. It almost sounds like a Google model in a way for Facebook. It, it really does. I see a lot of comparisons with Google now. Um, you know, and, and Google, actually, an interesting fact about them is of all of the mobile advertising revenue that's out there, this is according to eMarketer, Google makes 49% of all the money being made on mobile advertising. I think Facebook really, really wants to cut into that percentage. So we're seeing Facebook definitely model their, their business model and how they work with other developers off of Google. Absolutely. Well, we've got 1.2 billion users worldwide uh, using Facebook at this point. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg speaking to Wired had kind of an interesting uh, way to put how they, uh, how they are uh, developing going forward. Says, we've changed our internal model from move fast and break things to move fast, with stable infrastructure. Sounds like uh, it's, this is a Facebook's a company that has to take itself a little bit more seriously. You can't just roll out a feature and then roll it back if the public doesn't like it because you have too many people <laughs> who depend on a stable experience. Yeah, I think this is another moment of maturity for Zuckerberg and the whole face Facebook team. And of course, that slogan is just not as catchy. Um, move fast and break <laughs> things. It's so it's so like yeah. dynamic. It's so much the tech experience of iterate, iterate, iterate. And Zuckerberg is finally saying, "Hey guys, we got to slow down. We've got to have a little bit more of a, a, a face to put forward. Um, we've got to make sure that what we're putting forward." doesn't break the internet, doesn't break your Facebook experience. Um, we are serving a ton of people now. So I think that message is as much to his internal development team as it is to the public that they're saying, we're taking this really seriously. We want to give you something that works, that's reliable, and that has your security in mind. That's the message I took away there. Jill Duffy, writer over at PC Mag and, and a frequent guest on our news programs as of late. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Great talking to you. And let people know before you go where they can find more of your work online. I love the Twitter machine at Jill E. Duffy. And if you just look online for Jill E. Duffy, you're going to find me. Thanks so much, Jill. All right. Bye, Sarah. Bye-bye. All right. Some more news here. We mentioned Google. Google has announced that it stopped scanning student Gmail accounts for advertising purposes after students and some other Gmail users sued the company last year in California, claiming that the email scanning violated wiretap law. Now, these accounts are part of Google Apps for Education, which is a free service used by more than 30 million students, teachers, administrators, and offers Gmail accounts as well as calendars, cloud storage, and document creation. Google says it never placed ads inside the apps, and the company says it never used information to target ads anywhere, but will stop scanning all the more. All right, even if you aren't a Hulu subscriber, you'll have more options to watch Hulu content starting this summer. At an event in New York today, Hulu CEO Mike Hopkins announced that the streaming service will start letting viewers watch a selection of TV shows on mobile devices in addition to free viewing on the desktop. As of now, Hulu still limits viewers to watching just select clips, not full episodes. Free episodes will arrive on Android first and then come to iOS, though a redesigned iPhone app will also be launching this summer. Hulu is still in talks with cable providers to play Hulu through their cable boxes, but Hopkins gave no specific details on progress there. All right, in a moment, what the next generation of space fashion will look like. But first, a couple of calendar items. Motorola's next smartphone launch is set for May 13th in London. 
Details are a bit sparse, but the company says the device will, quote, connect more people to the world's information and each other, and that it will be, quote, made to last and priced for all. So, could be a successor to the affordable Moto G. Maybe it will include LTE, or perhaps a new model that comes even further down in price. LG's own invites have gone out for events in six cities across the world. On May 27th and 28th with San Francisco, New York, and London holding simultaneous launches. And Seoul, Singapore, and Istanbul the following day. It's widely believed to be the gold G3 Android smartphone, which LG has already acknowledged plans to release in the second quarter of this year. All right, finally, it's about form and it's about function in space. NASA has revealed the new look of its prototype Z2 spacesuit, which sports an external cover layer chosen by public vote. The cover layer option, dubbed Technology, won the spacesuit design challenge with 147,354 votes, just over 63% of the total ballots cast, according to, according to NASA officials. Biomimicry and trends in society were the runners up with 53,057 votes and 33,020 votes respectively. So a lot of votes overall. In a press release, officials noted that it wasn't just about the design though and explained, quote, the cover layer on flight suits used for spacewalks performs many other important functions like protecting the spacewalker from micro meteorite strikes, extreme temperatures in space and the harmful effects of radiation. These requirements drive selection of specific high-performance materials and design details that aren't necessary at this stage in a prototype suit. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show, if you would, at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. It's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.